Note, I'm not for Biden. Equally, I'm not for Trump. I'm for democracy. And democracy requires transparency, something that the 2020 American presidential election seemed to lack. If you listened to the media, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Joe Biden is already president. CNN Biden wins Pennsylvania, becoming the 46th President of the United States. The New York Times – What we learned after Biden became President. Obviously, the media cannot decide who the President is or will be. That's for the Electoral College to decide on December 14th. The media, though, seem to think they have all the power, and to some extent, they do. They're essentially manipulating the public through their own pro-Biden, anti-Trump bias. Here's an election map of the state of Vermont. It's clearly a blue state. There was no chance Biden was ever going to lose. Similarly, here's a typical red state, Missouri. Red pretty much everywhere. However, if you look at the contested state of Pennsylvania, you might be mistaken in thinking that it's a Republican stronghold as well. But you would be wrong. Biden has been declared the winner – by the media, of course. With its 20 electoral votes, it essentially decided the election. But if you were watching the results live, like I was, then you might have been fooled into thinking that Trump had it in the bag. He wasn't going to lose. But then, as the vote count progressed, something eerie started to happen. And I'm not talking about the city of Erie in northwestern Pennsylvania. Biden suddenly went from a sure loss to a narrow win again, called by the Associated Press. Their explanation was that most postal votes favour Biden. Republicans like to vote in person. Democrats like to stay at home. At least, according to the media's narrative. But that narrative doesn't seem to hold up in places like Florida, where towards the end of the count, Trump won. To me, something seems a bit fishy about the Pennsylvanian results. So much red. Trump was ahead. And then he lost on postal votes. And even though it's so close, the Associated Press have still called it. If anybody tries to talk about this, they get censored. Even the president himself – yes, he's still the president – is being censored by the mass media. Many media outlets cut away from his speech when he started talking about voter fraud. If what he's saying is complete rubbish, show it. Let the viewers decide for themselves whether it's rubbish or not. But why would the media censor him unless they've got something to hide? Just earlier today, media outlets cut away from a live White House press briefing by Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany. As I said before, what's the point in censoring her? If she's talking complete rubbish, let her speak. Clearly, the media have gone a bit too far with their censoring of public figures. I think the American people should be outraged. Anyway, Trump is filing suit, as he's entitled to do, regardless of what the mass media are saying. As long as there are unresolved court cases, this election is not over. If anybody remembers the 2000 presidential election with Al Gore and George W. Bush, you'd also know that some media outlets claimed that Al Gore won. But in the end, he lost the Electoral College vote after a legal battle over disputed vote counts in the state of Florida. I don't care if Biden wins. I don't care if Trump wins. But for crying out loud, let's stop all this censorship. That's not democratic. Actually, it's the opposite of democracy. This race isn't over until it's over. Stopping the president from speaking is setting a dangerous precedent. It's stopping all of those Trump supporters, which there are a lot of, hearing what he's got to say. It's stopping Americans hearing what he's got to say. And as I said in the title, it's a bad idea to go against the will of the American people.